Welcome to the DNA Engine tutorial to build a REST-driven search component. My name is Dan Palafian. We will use DNA Engine to power a simple book search tool that calls the Google Books API. Let's begin with some very basic boilerplate HTML to give us a valid web page as a starting point. Just after the H1 header line, insert some plain old HTML for a search input box and a find button. Then add the static HTML to mock up the search results. The section tag with the books class is for a list of books and we will include one book stub inside the list so we can mock up and style the web page. Each book in the search results will contain a thumbnail image for the book cover. For the purpose of styling the mockup, we'll temporarily use a sample book cover image from the dnaengine.org website. Displayed adjacent to the thumbnail will be meta information showing the book title, publisher, and price. Let's verify that the web page displays in a browser. It does display, but it's quite ugly. So let's add just enough CSS to make the style reasonable. For simplicity, we'll use the style tag to embed the CSS directly into the web page. This CSS will display each book in a blue box with a thumbnail for the book cover on the left side and the book metadata on the right side. Back to the browser, refresh, the web page looks better now, but it's still completely static. Next, we'll turn the static HTML for a book into a template that can take JSON data. Before we convert the HTML into a data-driven template, we need to know the structure of the data. We will do this in the browser by entering the URL for a sample REST call and manually examining the JSON response. The Google APIs are at www.googleapis.com tack on books to specify the books API and V1 for version one of the API. We want the volumes data and our sample search query is made with the parameter Q equals SpaceX. Instead of getting back HTML to render a web page, the REST API responds with JSON data. In this case, the search results are returned as an array of books in the items field. We are only interested in four specific pieces of data for each book. Three of these fields are in the book's volume info object. There's the title and the publisher, and a little further down inside the image links object is the thumbnail URL. Over in the sales info object, we find the list price object, which contains the amount field. Now we have the information necessary to turn our static HTML for a book into a data-driven template to generate a list of books. Convert the book HTML into a template by changing the class book to an ID, so the template has a name, and adding the class DNA-template. Now designate where the data is to be injected into the template. Wrap field names in double tildes and use dot notation to reference nested data inside the JSON. For example, the hard-coded value for the image's source attribute is replaced with tilde tilde volume info dot image links dot thumbnail tilde tilde. The title becomes tilde tilde volume info dot title tilde tilde. And the publisher becomes tilde tilde volume info dot publisher tilde tilde. Lastly, inject price with tilde tilde sales info dot list price dot amount tilde tilde. So now our book template is done and next we'll load the DNA engine library. A CDN content delivery network makes it easy to load the CSS and JavaScript files. First, load the CSS file for DNA Engine. Within the head section, insert a link tag to the style sheet. Then insert a script tag to load the DNA Engine JavaScript. Additionally, we'll load the fetch.json library. Fetch.json is a lightweight library that makes it trivial to call a REST endpoint when the returned data is JSON. Now for the fun part, writing the JavaScript to make the rest call and display the search results. Add a script tag and define a variable to store the base URL for the Google Books API. Then create a function name, find books. The first line of code reads the user's search terms by getting the value from the input element. Now that we have the URL and search terms, we're ready to use fetch.json to make an HTTP GET request. Call the fetch.json.get function and set the first parameter to the URL. The second parameter is for the query string object. In our case, we have one query parameter named Q and its value will be the search terms entered by the user. 
we tell fetch json to send the data to the function named handle results once the rest call promise is fulfilled of course now we need to define the handle results function the promise from fetch json passes the response json into the callback function and we're going to use that data to tell dna engine to clone the book template one clone for each book the first parameter for the dna.clone function is the name of the template and the second parameter is the data for the google books api we will use the items field because that is the array of books options are passed as a third parameter we set empty to true to clear out any previous books before displaying the new books and we set fade to true to smoothly fade in new results to make this all work we have to wire up the find books function use the data on click attribute to tell dna engine to call the function add the attribute to the button tag with the value find books so that when the user clicks the find button the find books function is called let's test this in the browser by searching for books about spacex the first book returned by the rest call is titled spacex and costs 44.99 Clicking the Find button works and is simple, but it makes for a cumbersome user experience. We can leverage the Smart Update feature of DNA Engine to replace the button with automatic live searching. Add the attribute Data on Smart Update directly to the input tag. This causes the Find Books function to be called whenever the user updates the input field. Now the Find button is superfluous and we can delete it. Additionally, we can make the Find Books function more robust. DNA passes the element that was changed to the callback function, so the user's input can now be read with just lm.value. Let's search for SpaceX again. Relevant books are displayed as the user types in the search items. Let's hop back to the code and step through the process of going from user input to the rest call made by fetch json to displaying search results in the browser. The find books function is called when the user updates the text in the input field. DNA engine passes the input element into the find books function where we read the value of the element. Then the URL plus the queue parameter are passed into the fetch json.get function to make the rest call to the Google Books API. And the handle results function is called once the JSON response is received. The data is passed into the DNA.clone function to make copies of the book template. And that's all you need to make a REST driven search component. Visit the dnaengine.org website for more information. If you have any questions, follow the link to the GitHub project and submit an issue with your question.